G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. This one I'm going to um, give you a KISS tutorial on setting up Solaris 10 in a console format. All right. Now this is assuming you don't have a frame buffer uh, or anything connected to your Sun system, whether it be PC, workstation or server. Now I can't use these two here because they don't take, uh, they are literally for console access only. So we're we're just going to go with this one, but I'm going to do a text install nevertheless. You see there, Solaris 10, SunOS 5.10. And we're going to take, what is it, number four. Okay, so this is what you would uh, go for in a um, console installation. And you'll see there, it will do similar things. But it's a little bit different in the um, in the top end, I guess you could say. If you have got a Sun 4U machine, anywhere from a V110 all the way up to what I've got, I recommend you get Solaris 10 and have that installed initially. And then you can, you know, if you can find a copy of Solaris 11 Express, drop a copy of Solaris 11 Express on it then. Um... You always get that user slash s bin zfs mount a failed. Um, that happens. I've I've had that happen all the time. So here is our console session. Now under a serial console output, this is what you would see. Now sometimes you will either have to push escape to or f two. Now I'm not sure what ones. Is. Oh, it's going to take f two. Okay. So we're going to go with zero. Oh, ah. zero. Obviously, we want English. So, as I said, depending on how your terminal is set up, whether it's putty or, in my case, mob or X term or whatever, under here will either be ESC2 or F2. And for this one, I've got it as F2. It is networked. We will use DACP. So you need your up and down arrows and your space bar. And so as you can see here, we have it networked. We're using DACP, but we're not bothering with IPv6. So this is a pretty typical output off the console. Three colors, RGB. And that's about it. Uh, we're not going to worry with Kerbos security for the purposes of this. Uh, we won't have it as a name service. And we'll just use NFS4. So make sure you get the right locale. And this is vital for Solaris as well as getting the open CSW packages as well. Time's an hour out, we can fix that. You can see there, so I've brought it up to the right time. Ooh. Have to retype that. Now, this is your choice, whether you enable remote services or not. You can see there that saying no will obviously provide a greater and more secure configuration in the SSH. And, and secure shell is the only service provided. So it's up to you how you uh, set this up. I'm just going to say yes because I'm comfortable with Solaris. We're going to say no with that because I don't have one. Okay, so we've now done the system identification through the console. The next thing to do is obviously the text install. 
and you can see here now we're just going to do a standard install now it'll be a non scuzzy scuzzy target now you've got two options here if you select auto reboot and your open boot prompt settings on your sun server are manual boot they'll get overwritten all right you'll have to uh at the time that the system starts to boot you'll have to push control c to stop it but i always go for auto boot personally um yes that's fine obviously we'll take it from the cd you obviously accept the license and then you need to set your geographical region. Oop. Don't need the uh, New Zealand one. We want the Australia one, obviously. Leave it as POSIX. Uh, there's no web start. Now, you have two options here with the Solaris install. You can use the traditional Unix file system. I tend to use ZFS. Now, you've got either, either one. We'll just go with this one as a default. As you can see there, 18 gig. So you've got your R pool. You've got Solaris 10 update 11. We've got a 18 gig hard drive, a swap area of two gig, a dump area of one gig. <coughs> it's up to you whether you want to change these. I'm just going to leave them as default. And we now go and begin the console install. And this is what you will see coming from your console output. All right through your SSH uh, console, or if you have got something like a uh, VT110 or VT100, VT240, whatever, um, it'll be similar to similar to this color um, blue. You'll see here that it'll actually, you'll see what's getting installed. Um, and even in console mode, you still get the desktop stuff installed is so you have to manually set up um, Java 2 desktop and CDE. So we'll go through a full installation of this and then I'll show you what to do um, at the end of the install and this is primarily for console only. Post SQL, we get GNOME games. So you get everything installed as you would if you had a frame buffer, but you won't be able to access it through the console, not unless you enable um, remote GUI. Which you know, I wouldn't do, but I have heard of people enabling it, especially through root, which I don't think is a real good idea. And it's a little bit, a uh, little bit crazy to do it that way. Now, depending on the configuration 
of your sun system and you see there Nvidia graphics systems installed as well depending on uh, your sun system um, will depend on the installation speed so you know the, the, this actually flies on the e server but on the V4 490 it's just a little bit slow because I haven't got as much RAM and also I've got slower CPUs and see there we get the Oracle configuration manager Now, if you were going to install Solaris um, as your network infrastructure server uh, without a frame buffer, you're obviously going to be using VI um, to edit your configuration files. And as I've said, we've looked at VI in previous videos. So, but this is a console install. And look, the, 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 the SSH session or the console serial session doesn't change in look or feel between doing it here on an x86 platform versus doing it on a on a spark platform but i have noticed people are enjoying the kiss tutorial so so you can see there it's about four gig for the complete install of solaris 10u11 I say about four gigs, just under four gig, but it, it, you know. And the good thing with this also means that if you do add a frame buffer to Solaris after the install, um, it, yes, it does, because I've had it happen. It does pick it up. Webmin's there for you as well if you wish to use Webmin. It's an older version of Webmin, but it is there. Obviously, Perl will be older. And obviously, with with Solaris, you could, um, if you had multiple Solaris machines from a central Solaris server, you can actually access certain applications from Solaris and set it up as an application server, which I have seen. I just don't know how to do it myself. So as you can see, the system's now installed. We've got the mount points table set up in the... Um, VF stab file the ETC host files got all our network addressing and all the uh, system wide environmentals are set up in as you can see there in ETC default INIT it will now do the boot block setup and of course you can check the log out at the end of it if you need we'll just push C Push C again. And you see there it will now update the platform and the boot archive for slice A of the drive. Remembering that Unix slices up the drive differently to Linux. And we've seen that with OpenBSD and Solaris in some cases as well. Now, you won't get this in a console mode. Oh, I was a bit slow setting that up. What you'll end up seeing is just a straight um, serial output instead of a graphics output. Obviously, the sharing vectors, it's not happy with again. 181 NSMF5 service descriptions. And that varies as well. 
depending on your 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 sun base. I've got a funny feeling this will switch straight to graphics, which is unfortunate. Ah, there it is. So now we go root. Oh. And here is Solaris 10 U11 as a console. And you can see here, it's pretty much the same setup as most of the BSD Unixes in some cases. Um... You see there, there's our VR, there's our hosts. We can go in and have a look at the MNT directory, which there's nothing in there. We can go into, oh, ah. So there's nothing in the home directory. So, oop. That is Solaris 10 in console. Now, it is going to be cranky, and now you'll see it'll go into, um, you know, it's waiting to go into um, dis display zero. But if I type exit, it'll just go straight back in. And it'll just reboot into into a desktop session. So there is setting up Solaris, the core operating system. And then if you want to add the open CSW packages, it would be a similar scenario uh, in the console mode. You would go and okay, so yeah, right. So it's gone straight into desktop mode. But there is setting up Solaris through the console. Hopefully that's helped people out. We'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.